Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. In today's video, it's part one of a big plant room installation and we are down in the basement. Right, this is our first day on this new plant room job that we are doing. Now, this is gonna be providing heating and hot water for a five to six bedroom house. We're gonna have two heating zones, one for the ground floor and one for the first and second floor. From this point here, we'll be having a low loss header, 10 meter pump, it's quite a large property. And we're gonna be having two 150 litre unvented cylinders located here. So the reason we are having two 150 litre cylinders is because there's gonna be certain times when this property is only gonna have a few people in it. So we don't wanna be heating up hot water unnecessary. It's all gonna be pumped and powered by the DAB SE tank. So we've put these in before, they're absolutely brilliant. Now the water pressure is actually okay here, but you can't really compare this to um, what they call Bailey. <laughs> Okay, so other than getting the wall raven rails onto the wall, the first job of the day is to actually get our risers up into the ground floor. So the reason we need to do this first is so we can actually get an accurate representation of how all our components and fittings are gonna lay out because we're actually quite short for room here and head height. So what we've done is we've got the big bad boy bender out and started bending the 28 mil rather than use a load of fitting. So, that's got us up into the ground floor there. And then from this point here, obviously nice and secure in the wall raven, rapid rail, um, rubber line clips. And we're gonna put all our zone valves here. Down here next to the boiler, we will have our low loss header um, and possibly our expansion vessel. And yeah, so tomorrow we can start getting everything into place and I should go together quite quickly. Okay, so it's day two now down in the basement and yesterday we finished getting the risers down in position. So today we can start getting the main components on. Um, I'm just locating the low loss header and the zone valves for the heating. So I'll just show you the setup we're going for. Um, I'm using an IMI uh, low loss header this time. I normally use a Spyro tape, but I like this one because it's a little bit skinnier. And although it's quite a big space down here, by the time we've got twin unvented cylinders in, we're gonna be a bit short for room. Um, also ESI zone valves 28 going on here and I've also gone for the Wilo this time rather than the Grundfos so that's actually a 10 meter head pump um, so I'm looking forward to seeing how this performs. Um, I'm running 35 mil off of my low loss header this time um, mainly because our heating zones are actually going to be in 28 until they branch off all the way up in the loft. So just want to make sure we've got the correct uh, volume of water there. So down here, that's our, where our hot water return is going to come in. And then this section here, well, I've just bent this pipe around this bit of 35. I'm actually going to drop my two hot water zone valves there. So it's coming together. Once the little uh, fiddly bits are all done, it will just be a case of click, uh, connecting onto the appliances. So yeah, we are getting there.
Okay, so we're starting to get all the structure of the job into place now, and Bailey is just over here working on the DAB SC tank. So, again, for those of you that don't know, this is a brake tank, basically fills up from the cold water main, almost like a cold water storage tank, and then this pump down here sits on top of this docking station, and that's gonna provide pumped water throughout the property. Uh, so we're having a little bit of trouble because we've not got a lot of head height here, and also we've got to leave some old copper pipe in place at the moment because it's still live. So I have spoken to DAB about the height restriction on this and they said it's absolutely fine. Um, you're also probably wondering how are we going to get all the overflows and PRVs out as we're in a basement, but we've actually got a high temperature pump which we're going to be installing, which will pick up everything as well as a condensed pump for the boiler. So I've just got the um, expansion vessel pipe in and the tank itself, so sitting quite nicely there. And we are still waiting for the plimp from Navian from the boiler, but I'm just gonna open this up now and start getting the pipes into place. So I'm pretty sure we're either gonna bring them out the back or bring them to the side, and then I'll just run them down there. So what I'll do is have a bit of a tidy up, get the cover off of this, and we can have a look at the water connections. Okay, so for those of you that would have watched any of our previous videos, you would have seen we've actually fitted quite a lot of these Navian oil boilers recently. So this one's slightly different because it's an internal version. Now, we normally always fit the external version, whether we're inside or not, just because A, I prefer the color, and also they're a little bit better protected with a little bit more noise insulation. But in this case, we've got to go um, directly up. So the external version doesn't allow for a vertical flue unless you bring it out the side first. Whereas on this internal version, we can just pop through that knockout here. So we're at the very limitations of how long we can have this vertical flue. So I really don't wanna push it any further than I need to. Um, so I'll just quickly run through the water connections on it. So you take out the side panel and you can see here, we've got the return connection there and the flow just above it. And inside the Navian pack, you get these uh, shark bite type fittings, uh, street elbow with isolation valves. They will just literally sit straight onto that brass connection there. And then you can either run your pipes uh, through this panel here, through this panel on the top, and, oh, and then also through the rear. So we're just gonna come out on the rear on this one. Um, again, because it's an internal version, there's no sort of like rubber, rubber grommets or anything uh, to weather seal it. The pipe will just terminate through the back end. Then hopefully when the plinth turns up, we can get it piped up into our flow and return there. Uh, another thing I just wanted to quickly mention is, although we've got the IMI low loss header and combined filter, I've actually put a 28 mil Magna Clean on it as well just because I believe these are the best filters on the market. Um, we really wanna obviously protect the system, protect the boiler. So although the IMI will work to some degree, I don't believe it's anywhere near as good as the MagnaClean. So we're using the IMI for its low loss header functions and also the de-aerator, but the main MagnaClean will uh, pick up all the uh, sludge and debris. Okay, so we've come to the end of the week now and I've just pulled up at my house and I've got to sort out this big mess as I've got to load up some bikes in here tomorrow. So soon to come, a load of metal van racking going down here. So I cannot wait as this is an absolute shamble. So thank you very much for watching this video. Stay tuned for part two and I'll catch you on the next one.